Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So another record attempt today. It is to get the maximum range um, air to air kill in the history of DTS. I was about to say the world, but um, the reason I don't say in the world is because um, as far as I'm aware there is a difference or, or, or you, we can't really relate these missile ranges to the real world. Now the reason is, and you may um, think slightly differently Sherman, but as I understand it, missile ranges in DCS are scaled down slightly from the real world, between 20 and 40 percent I've heard, depending on which missile, which height, uh, how fast it was fired and so on. Um, as far as I understand the reason is, is to basically um, to shrink the tactical map a bit, move everyone a little bit closer together. Uh, right, so that's that. Now how are we going to do it? Um, we want the absolute fastest jets with the absolute fastest, uh, sorry, longest firing missiles. So the longest firing missile we are aware of that we can use in DCS is a R27ER, which is the big thumping great radar guided missile I've got under my wing there. Um, I'm driving it with a MiG-29 because it's the fast, fastest jet we can use which takes this missile. Um, I will look at my speed now if I go down to my Mac meter. I'm just under Mac 2.3. We've got up to Angel's 27 Imperial, which is, I believe, the fastest uh, this aircraft can fly at when in this clean state. I'm low fuel, um, so I'm going to get the absolute maximum speed out, out of the jet. Lowest weight, lowest alpha. Uh, so we've got everything tailored towards the maximum range shot. Um, and let's go to have a look at the opposing guy, which is an F-15. It's an F-15 because it can be, because it is the fastest jet in DCS. Uh, and what are you at, Sherman? Uh, Mac? Uh, according to my meter, just under Mark 2.5. So just under Mark 2.5, and that's the absolute fastest he can get that again. Stripped out jet, minimum fuel, it's the fastest we can get. So we've got the absolute maximum closing rate between these two uh, jets which is going to give us the maximum firing range. The way we're going to do it is I'm going to put my radar on, hopefully I'll be able to see him in time because the closing speed is like Mac five, nearly Mac 5, you know, hypersonic. Uh, fire the missile when I get launch authority which should be the uh, longest predicted uh, missile range shot at which point I will note the range at which we fired and then we'll have a chat about it afterwards. This is Angels 37 which is the maximum speed the aircraft can go at. Uh, after we've done this we'll go and try again up there at Angel 60 or thereabouts where um, these planes aren't, can't go as fast but the missile can go faster because it's a non-air breathing engine on the missile. It goes much faster up there where there's less air resistance. It doesn't matter if there's less air for the engine. Right, for the first attempt, Sherman, are you ready? Ready. Three, two, one, and pause. Burner. Burner. Right, radar is on. Scanning. Right, let me know when you see me. Scanning. Lost a little bit of attitude. I'm only expecting you to see it about 60 miles. Roger, I'm going to have to be super quick. wonder how... Okay, I got your nails now. In fact, you were so far out, I wasn't even getting your nails until now. Oh, shit. Right, yeah, Roger. Hey, I've zoomed out to uh, 200 kilometers on the old scanner. You definitely won't see me at 200, maybe at 100. Roger. Radar contact at about 50 miles. Cap nothing. I'm directly on your nose. 40 miles. What a piece of shit radar this has got. 30 miles. Oh, finally I found it. And so <laughs> it took took 30 miles until I found you. Right, I'm gonna have to change the uh, PRF frequency a bit. You need to have me in high frequency. Watch out. Uh, PRF to high, which in theory is going to help us pick him out a little yeah, bit. Yes, so if the contact is hot, high PRF will always help you here. Bet you're wishing you had an org 9 about now. Mm -hmm. We may have to do it the other way around, you may have to shoot me, Sherman. Radar contact, 40, 50 miles. Nothing yet. 40 miles. Gotcha. Can't lock yet. Still can't lock. Right. Still can't lock. Still can't lock. Gotcha. Oh uh, no. Yeah, okay. By the time I can lock you up, you're, you're like half the way down my uh, range bar. It's not going to work with the MiG-29. Let's go and reset it as a F-15, I suppose. 
Hello, welcome back. So we tried the MiG-29, we tried the different frequencies on the MiG-29, we couldn't get it to lock the hostile plane in time. Mm, don't know why, we think the flanker is going to be the same. So instead we're going F-15 versus F-15, we're going to use an AIM-120C, which is the longest range missile we've got. Uh, so we'll give that a go. Three, two, one, go. Radar on. 80 miles. Right. Let's see what we right. can get. So as long as we keep a straight heading, I suggest you put it into track while scan mode because that reduces the uh, cross section that the radar scans. A firm done. You'll notice that the cross section it's scanning is now substantially smaller, so you'll have an easier time tracking me as long as we're head on. A firm. So it seems like the F-15 in-game has modeled with a uh, longer range of radar than the uh, MiG, at least. Yeah, I firm that. Um, it's probably not really something they test, you know, Mach 2.5 versus Mach 2.5, so... No, it can't, because the F-14 can go supersonic and maintain it with scores. Lock him. Radar contact, 50 miles. Cap Fox 3, right, keep flying towards it, it's the missile out. 50 mile shot, that's very impressive. And right, no I'm head on. Annoyingly, it says I can shoot at about, well, a lot more than that, so it's, I just couldn't get a lock in time. Right. I can confirm it was a 50 mile shot. I thought it said 40. And now. impact in about 3, 2, 1, I'm guessing. No, it's got ages. Oh, right, no, I can see something coming towards me. I'm yeah. assuming that's the missile. Yeah, here it comes. Still going. Alright. So it's still going. I see Sherman. Gonna hit you. It's gonna hit you. And yeah. bum! Beautiful. Yeah, I saw it. Gotcha. Right, lovely job. Right, I'm gonna quickly nip out and watch that footage and see what it thought was the range standby. Right, so that was the uh, Angels. Yeah, the, the, uh, that was the Angels 37 shot. Now the problem was not actually the range of the missile. The missile said it could fire at about 60 something miles. It was basically we can't. I can't get a lock on the guy in time. So that seems to be the restriction. So we're going to try get an Angel 60. And if that doesn't work, we'll try something else where we can just try mad dogging a. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, mad dogging a missile out without getting a lock and see how that goes. Right, Sherman, six Angel 60, are you ready? Three, two, one, go. Uh, are your engines working? Uh, yes. Okay, mine are just taking ages to spool. Finally. Well, what do you expect? You're at 60,000 feet. If, um, We're close right. to. Alright, just do our best, I suppose. Right. Radar is on, DWS mode on. Yeah, I got you. If we ever do this test in the F-14, it's going to have to be the F-14B, because I fear the F-14A will just literally compress the stall while flying level at this altitude. Yes, yeah, we will definitely try that. But yeah, the F-14A has the TF-30s basically because um, the funds necessary to... Um, change the engines initially were removed when the Air Force pulled out of a joint program with the Navy regarding uh, redoing the engines for both the 15 and the 14. Okay. And so they basically were forced to stick with the TF-30s from the F-111s. Yeah, and even with the TF-30s, a 14A killed a 15A. F-14 is still a lethal plane, but having underpowered engines which have a, which have a um, worrying tendency to compress stall, that's uh, another issue. Yeah, with the 14A, you, you're not supposed to slam the throttle forward or back. What's our distance? Um, 50 miles. Radio contact 50 miles. Roger, trying to lock. Can't lock, can't lock, can't lock, can't lock, can't lock. Lock. Fox 3 at... 40 miles exactly. Yeah. No, so I, the problem up here was I just couldn't lock you in time. Uh, it says a theoretical about 68 miles. Theoretical. We can good. we can swap out positions and I can try for a further shot. Yeah, yeah, roger that. Welcome back. So Sherman's we're swapping around roles. I'm now the target. Sherman is the aggressor. Just make sure that you um, 
Um, make a note of what distance you fire at on the bar on the right of the HUD. Yes. Otherwise we won't have any empirical evidence. Right, I'm on my way. Yeah, I think it's locking. Locking the target seems to be the problem. Fox 3 on the way at about 50 miles. 50? Yep, I agree. That was... Just it's lofting! It's fucking lofting! Right, I'm just sitting nice and cold. Did you get that distance? Uh, Chaos? It is between 45 and 50. Did you film it? Cap spike. And cap dead. Lovely shot, Sherman. Very mm -hmm. good. It's a shame I've got no way of um, running that back to check what distance that was. Oh no, I, yeah, I can. I can get the track for you. Right. Yes, you can. Not okay. to mention, I can confirm that that shot was at about 45. Roger, so it's about 45. Um, I'm going to go, I'll watch the replay, replay back and just uh, double check it, and I'll come back on the mic in a second. Other than that, we think that's the most you can get. The MiG-29s and the flankers, we simply, without any PRF, we just couldn't get a, a radar lock in time. The, the F-15, the m limit massively was the radar lock. Um, the missile would happily have gone 80 miles, it said. Uh, so about 45 miles, we think, is the best we can get. If you've got any other ideas, uh, let us know. But that's the most efficient way I can think of firing a missile. That was Angel 60, by the way. Right, Chairman, anything to add? Uh, not much, other than I basically had to pull the trigger the moment I got lock. Hey, firm. Yeah, it's just that radar. I couldn't get it. All right, uh, lovely job, and we'll see you later.